welcome back. We're going to be looking at planets today and how they behave, the time it takes to go around the sun, the relationships they have with the, the radius of their orbit and the time it takes for the, the orbit to be complete. Uh, so let's dive in. We earlier had discussed how Kepler discovered some interesting uh, relationships between the time it takes to do an orbit. That's, that's what this is. Think of it as a whole trip around the block. And then the distance it is from the sun. Now, they're, they're not circles, but they're close enough to circles. And this relationship is remarkably accurate. It's not perfect. They discovered some little quirks later that, that went on that uh, were uh, interesting. And it led to some other discoveries. And uh, yeah, it, it doesn't make such a big difference that in this course, we need to be worried about it. Uh, we can just look at it uh, for what it is. And it's more or less a rounding error to get the accuracy that we want. So let, let's take a look at what we have here. That's the relationship. Now let's put in our sun, the earth and Jupiter. And I couldn't do it to scale. I don't have a big enough screen, <laughs> but it kind of gives you the idea. Earth is closer, very small compared to Jupiter. And then the sun is eh, pretty big. So let's take a look at this. Now, we want to decide or find the time it takes for Jupiter to take a trip around the block to go one full revolution around the sun. Now, because of the relationship that we were just looking at, and it's, it's coming up again, don't worry. Uh, we're going to do some really kind of neat tricks here. Okay, first, let's assign the relationship to Earth and to Jupiter. Earth will be blue and Jupiter will be yellow. Now, uh, we're going to do a neat little math trick, and it's not cheating, <laughs> even though I use the word trick. It's a, it's a valid way of simplifying uh, some calculations because if we say that earth one year okay is the time it takes uh, we're going to have the time it takes for jupiter be in relationship to the earth time we don't have to do it to earth we could do mars and and use a mars year although for that we'd have to trade th some things out to make it interesting like an earth year but let's just do with earth because we are familiar with one year and the distance from earth to the sun is going to be one astronomical unit uh, you could do something with meters or miles or kilometers or whatever you wanted but it would just complicate things and if you can make life simple for yourself, by all means, do it. So let's take a look at this. What do we have? We've decided that the distance, and by the way, we need to do it from the middle of the sun to the middle of the earth. So that's, that's why I have these lines going all the way out there and why we have uh, it, well, almost going through the center of Jupiter. Uh, not quite perfect there. Sorry about that. All right, uh, one AU, one astronomical unit, that's the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And then we have this, the time, one year and one year squared. So the one side of the equation is going to look quite nice. And, and then we see the relationship here. That's Jupiter is about 5.2 uh, times larger than Earth's radius to the sun. So let's let's see how this this goes then. All right. We have a, a simple little mathematical expression here now. And uh, with the color coding and all, you should be able to follow this really simply. So let's let's just clean this up and, and see how it goes. And erase there. Okay. Now you can see that after you rearrange these guys, that you will get this here. 
11.9 years because remember we're looking for time that's what the question asked for and here when you only have two significant figures let's just do it like this so that we just take the two significant figures um, if we wanted greater accuracy we could we could go to tables that presented that but but for this it's more than good enough to just say yeah Jupiter takes about 12 years to go around the Sun whereas Earth takes one so if you're not interested in actual years you could easily convert that into seconds or whatever time interval you want hours or whatever but I think it's easy just to keep it in terms of Earth years so um, Again, it doesn't have to be this way. You may be presented with a problem where you say, okay, let's, let's calculate it between Mercury and Saturn, okay? Uh, then it'll just be a little bit more complicated than that. But for today, I think I like this. It shows you how to use it, and it also shows you a neat little trick for math that where if you relate things in a particular way to one unit and another unit, then you can simplify your life. Hope that helps. See you next time.